guys see that? I just saw a commercial um, uh, for Kentucky Fried Chicken where the parents are all excited because their two bratty kids won't sit still at the dinner table. But they got them this fucking chicken and they're feeding it to them. They're basically very subtly saying that there's drugs in this chicken that will make your spastic children chill the fuck out. And spastic, I mean, like, you know, not, not the way they mean it over there in Great Britain. You can't say that on the comedy, or well, you can say it in a comedy club over in Scotland, but you'll have a rough, you'll have a rough go of it if you say the kid was spastic. Over there, that means like severely uh, mentally challenged. Over here, it just means you're not going to get laid till you're 26. <laughs> when you're in grad school, looking over a fucking cadaver, right, with some other fucking nerd. Nerd, right? And you're just sitting there going, you know, the ankle bone's connected to the knee bone, right? Has any of this made any sense? Well, it shouldn't. It's fucking Sunday night, and I am spent. And I got a whole bunch of shit I have to do tomorrow, so I got to do it tonight. All right, I'm off my game. All right? You, you cleanse your liver in like 42, 43 days or something like that. Every drunk I know has told me that. Every drunk I know that does not have a medical degree has told me. That if you go 42, 43 days, you will cleanse your liver, at least to the booze, you know? Now, if you fucking, <laughs> you start doing blow or, uh, you know, eating a bunch of trans fat fucking food or feeding your kids Kentucky fried fucking chicken. Jesus Christ, what happened to parents that you got to drug your kids to keep them under control? You know? You know what it is? Kids don't respect their parents. They respect them, but they don't respect like, oh, my God, this this person could wring my neck, could pick me up by my hair, right? Could grab a paddle and fucking, you know, mostly hit my ass, but also kind of hit my lower back because I'm squirming, right? That doesn't exist anymore. So now these kids are so fucking out of control. These people have to go down to Kentucky Fried Chicken. OK, and I, I, I use the term chicken very loosely to go down in whatever that is that's in that bucket. OK, if it doesn't have a beak, if it doesn't have feet. If it's fucking, you know, chest, is, its breast is sticking out like the cast on fucking. Uh, what was what was that show with the Italians there on New Jersey Shore? Jersey Shore, right? In my world, that's not a fucking chicken. You know, you want the chicken that looked like Mark McGuire in his rookie season. You don't want to eat the chicken that looks like Mark McGuire when he fucking played for the Cardinals. You know? If you eat a regular fucking chicken, first of all, it's going to look like a pigeon to you. Because you're so used to seeing those roided up ones. That they have murderer's row that you got down there at your fucking Shaw's. Right? Your Vaughn's. Your J.C. Pennies, wherever the fuck you buy your goddamn chicken, you go down. You go down to any one of the mainstream fucking supermarkets, okay? And I swear to God, when you get to the chicken section, okay, if you if you slept for the last thirty years, like that Van Gundy guy under the bridge, whatever his fucking name is, Van Morrison, what the hell's his name? Rip Van Winkle, right? That was one of those people, one of the Vans. Um. If you slept for the last 30 years and you went down, okay, and they showed you what a chicken was, you'd be like, uh, you'd be like, that ain't no chicken. Okay, it's a goddamn turkey. I know a fucking, I know a fucking turkey when I see one, all right? Ain't no such thing as a nine pound fucking chicken. Can't be done. No, sir. No, sir. Get off my property. Okay, I'm, I'm done with your witchcraft, okay? Hey, I said get the fuck out of here. Fuck off my property. Um, honey, get the gun. Um, <laughs> yeah, you would think it was a fucking turkey. And the thing is, is now it's a chicken. And I remember I watched one of those food inks, one of those fucking liberal goddamn things, you know, talking about flying carpets and electric roads and all that bullshit. Somewhere in there, they were talking about, you know, the food supply and how poisonous it is. Poisonous. Poisonous it is. It is. Um, so I fucking went down to a farmer's fucking market and, um, I said, I want to, I want to, I want to all, I want, I want to, I want an all natural fucking chicken. I can't even talk. I'm so tired. 
want an all-natural f- chicken. And the guy goes, these are all natural. And I said, all natural? And he goes, well, I'm like, come on, where is it? And he had to walk around the corner, sitting over there, lonely. I swear to God, looking like a dove, looking like somebody killed a fucking dove. He goes, right there, that one right there is 100% all natural, nothing's wrong with it. And I was like, I was like, what, what? That's what a chicken's supposed to look like? And he raised his eyebrows and he, he, he kind of put his lips together so they were a straight line and then he nodded. You know that look that people do like, like, yeah, I'm in the Matrix. I realize I'm in the Matrix, but, you know, I knocked the bitch up. So I got to be selling these roided up chickens. No. Um, <laughs> anyways, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. So basically, that's what these people are eating over there. Okay. They are, they are drugging up their kids. But I can't get mad at them because I actually did that to Charlie Murphy and uh, Donnell Rawlings. I, I've told this story before. Hey, I'll tell it again. It's my fucking podcast. I actually drug I, the exact thing that they're doing in that Kentucky Fried Chicken commercial, where they're trying to get their kids to sit still by just feeding them so full of these fucking trans fats from these roided up beakless fucking chickens with their Dolly Parton breastuses, right? I did that to fucking Donnell and Charlie. I was hungover. And we were taking a car service from Chicago Zanies up to one of those, whatever the fuck it was, St. Charles. It was a three-city run. And one of them was St. Charles. So we're getting in the fucking limo. Don L's in rare form. Charlie's in rare form. They're fucking gabbing and trashing people and me and everybody. And I just don't want to hear it. I'm like, I don't want to listen to these fucking guys running their goddamn yaps in the back of this car the whole fucking way up. I want a nice, quiet ride. This is going to suck. And I walked outside, hung over, and I walked into the Chicago where, you know, almost got hit by three fat people. And um, I looked up the street, and I saw it. I saw Popeyes. And I was like, oh, thank God. And I fucking walked in there, and I got all this fucking Popeyes chicken with biscuits and all of this shit food. And I brought it back to the car. And as the car pulled up, they came out. And I said, hey, guys, I got us some, I got us some food. And they went, oh, that's fucking great. You know, they were hungry or whatever. And they started chowing that fucking Popeye's food. And I sat back nibbling on a drumstick. <laughs> and I swear to God, 10 minutes later, they were asleep. I'm not lying to you. They were fucking asleep, snoring the whole way up, and I was just sitting there loving life the whole fucking ride up. And I, you know what? I admitted to them later. They thought it was funny, but that's basically what it is. They called it the itis. That's what they call it when you eat that shit food and then you have to go to sleep. They call it the itis, I guess. And by they, I mean African Americans. Um, they call it the fucking itis, and that's what they got. They and I learned that from Donnell because I don't know how that man stayed in shape but he had the worst diet he's one of those guys who like you stop for gas and he comes out of the gas station with like one of those gas station hot dogs <laughs> and he would eat it and then he would immediately fall asleep and I and I would say to Charlie look at this guy well, he's sleeping and Charlie would be like yeah man he got the itis and he explained that to me and with that little bit of information it went into my evil white brain, and I drugged my two African-American friends way back in the year 2005. Um, and that's a little chicken story for you. How did you like that, everybody? So that's what the fuck they're saying right there. That's what Kentucky Fried Chicken is allegedly saying. I guess I have to say alleged. So their lawyers on retainer don't attack my fucking po- podcast, as far as I can tell. I'm asking you right now. Um, Kentucky Fried Chicken, hiding behind your fucking letters, KFC. Is that what the fuck you do? Is that what you're saying? If you got kids who are not stimulated enough that they can't even sit down, if you haven't, you gotta run them around. You gotta tire your kids out. Open the door. You send them out in the fucking yard. Go ahead, go outside. Get outside and play. 
That's what you do, like a goddamn one of those fucking Irish dogs that was bred to, to, to herd sheep. You got to let that fucking thing run around. Run around in circles. Go ahead, get out there. Take a ball. You just fucking throw it out in traffic and let that dog run around dodging cars. It comes in. It's going to lay down. Okay? It's not going to jump all over company sticking its cold nose right in their fucking hoo has That's what you got to do with your kids. You got to send them outside. Right? But to catch a predator and all these other fucking shows, you know, all these shows on TV where people forget their kids are in a car with their windows rolled up. And their kids are too fucking dumb to roll them down or they're too weak because they haven't gone outside and climbed a fucking tree. And they stay in there and, they, and they, their brains get cooked like a boxer, you know. You know, that dog boxers, they don't, they don't do well in the sun. Well, well, neither do fat kids. If you leave the windows rolled up, you know, and they got those weak arms that all the, the, like the most tedious things they ever did was take a wrapper off of a fucking uh, an ice cream sandwich, right? You can't leave them in the car. My mother left us in the car all the fucking time. She would go to school. She was going to school during the day, trying to further her education. And she left five fucking kids in the car with the windows rolled up and money for Burger King. And she would say to us, just go into the Burger King. That's the only time you were to leave this car over the, le- over the next three fucking hours when I'm in class. And she would disappear around the corner after we said, absolutely, Mom. And she walked away, and uh, we immediately would get out of the car, start walking up and down the streets in Boston. We'd go into fucking Burger King, and we'd we'd have something to eat. Do you know what would happen nowadays if they just saw five fucking dirty-faced kids walking up and down Calm Ave, Boylston Street, going into a Burger King, looking like the cast of fucking Annie? Someone would have filmed it, and my mother would have been in They would have taken us away. You know, but, but they didn't. Because there was no cameras back then or videotape ones. I mean, there was, but only the people had them on like the news and a young Steven Spielberg. So we went in there and we fucking got some food, climbed on cars and fucking yelled at people and shit. You know, hanging on par- parking meters and all that. Hence, we had the fucking forearm strength to roll down the windows and none of us ever had an issue in the car. And you know what? I think that's one to grow on. So there you go, people. I'm not saying KFC is food. I'm not. I'm just kidding. I'm not saying it's bad food. Every once in a while, who's kidding who? Every once in a while, wouldn't it be great if you could just fucking do heroin the way you can eat McDonald's? Just like every once in a while, you'd just be like, you know what? Yeah, let's just fucking tie off, nod off for the rest of the fucking day. And like the people at work understood it. You know, hey, where were you yesterday? Ah, oh, man, yeah, I got this black tower heroin came in. You know, hadn't done it in like three months. So what? Hey, figured, fuck it. Oh, is that what you did? How was it? How was it? You know, like like you went to Aruba. You said, ah, oh, dude, it was awesome. Fuck it. I don't remember shit. But you can't. You know, you get addicted to it. Oh, I know what I wanted to talk about. How about a moment of silence for another two? For the next two great men who are, who are about ready to be sliced in half by their fucking ex-wives. How about a moment of silence for Kobe Bryant, that fucking warrior, okay? Who had an injury to his fucking right hand that would have kept most people out for half a season. He didn't even miss a fucking game. Showed up, hitting all kinds of big shots, an absolute fucking warrior. He is about ready to have to fork over $190 million to his fucking ex-wife. And I'm going to ta- talk to all the fucking women right now who are going, that's right, that's right. You know, this is what I want from you guys this week. All right? I want you to justify the fucking divorce laws in this country. I want you to justify them. I want you to tell me why she deserves $190 million. I want you to justify it. Don't just go, well, because that, that's, that's the law. <laughs> that's what the law says, so there you go. I don't want that. I want you to justify it. Like if I asked you why is murder illegal, you wouldn't be like, well, that's the law. <laughs> that's what it says, so that's what you do. 
you'd be like, because life is the most precious thing on this planet and everything has the right to be alive and you, you need to respect that. You only get one life. And for someone to take your life is the worst thing you could. You, that's how you would defend that law. I have fucking racked my brain to try and justify how anybody is entitled to $190 million of somebody else's fucking money. Remember that story I told you last week? Sure, we all do. I'm going to bring it up. This fucking guy got accused of rape, gets convicted, goes to jail. 25 years in fucking prison. They find out afterwards through the, the new DNA technology that he didn't fucking do it. Without a doubt, we had the wrong guy. You know what he got for 25 years of trying to make sure somebody didn't stick their ding -a -ling in his fucking doorknob? Didn't he make sense? Whatever. He got $4 million. Four million bucks. This bitch has been living high on the fucking hog for 10 fucking years. You know, can't even hit a fucking layup on a goddamn Nerf hoop set. And she's going to get 190 million fucking dollars. Ladies, I want you to justify. You fucking justify that to me. That is the biggest crock of fucking shit ever. You know what I, you know what I love? And then I'll go, well, he fucked around. He fucked around. Yeah, he did fuck around. So he should have to pay for it. But it shouldn't be $190 million. Come on. That's fucking ridiculous. Some guy gets falsely accused for rape, spends 25 years in Rikers Island. People slashing each other's faces, throwing boiling water on each other. People getting raped. All this fucking shit you got to go through. And you only get $4 million. This bitch is going to get $190 million. I love how it's looked down upon to to cheat on your wife but it's totally fine to tell somebody that you love them when you really don't just because of all this shiny shit that they have you know look at this look at this woman he fucked around on her she busted him four or five fucking years ago the relationship's over the trust is gone that relationship was fucking over why did she stay because he bought her that big yellow fucking diamond <clears throat> Really? That's why she stays? And then what does she do? She wanted out right then. She wanted out right then. But that money was too fucking good, and that bitch stuck around. That big yellow diamond showing it off any fucking where she could. Right? And then what does she do? She hangs around like some jaded cop trying to get her fucking pension. She sticks around for ten fucking years. The second... Ten years comes around. She gives herself a Christmas gift. Hey, Kobe, go fuck yourself. By the way, that'll cost you $190 million. All right? In my world, this is how that would work. If, that, if she wanted the entire $190 million, I'm really burning a lot of material here because I'm going to fucking vent about this on stage. So you're hearing this first. This is like when you hear one of those Zeppelin songs before they fucking uh, polish it off. All right? This is too good not to fucking say on stage. I have to do this shit. Um, if I do say so myself. Or maybe I just love ranting about this shit. This is, this is how she should get this fucking money. All right? Hey, hey, whatever your name is, Bryant. You know, isn't that amazing how you never know what their fucking names are? You know, because they don't win any fucking championships or do anything. Right? Um, this is how I think that she should get the $190 million, All right? You start off, no matter what. Mrs. Whatever your name is, Bryant, you're getting $30 million. Okay? Which is plenty of fucking money. You can raise a whole goddamn fa family on that, live in a nice fucking house and have a nice car and still have $20 million left over. All right? So no matter what, you're getting $30 million. You want to get up to $190 million? <clears throat> Let's go down to the Staples Center, sweetheart. All right? We're going to start off easy. You give him a basketball, you fucking have the whole place jam-packed with people screaming at her, shaking the signs and blowing air horns, right? All right, if you hit a layup, Mrs. Whatever Your Name is, Bryant, we're going to give you another $5 million, right? She hits that, you move to the next round. Then you go to the foul line. You want to take another $20 million, you got to hit a foul shot. And everybody's screaming, just have a bunch of fucking divorced guys sleeping on futons, standing behind the backboard. 
screaming at this bitch. You hit that, you move to the half court line. You hit it, you get, only get one shot, too. Just like Kobe at the end of the fucking game. How he made all this money by hitting the big shots when there was fucking 20,000 people screaming at him who didn't want him to do it. You go to the fucking half court line. You hit that. What are we up to? What are we up to? That's 50 million, 55 million. We'll give you 50 million. 50 million if you hit a half court. Then you go to the full court. You go full court. If you hit that, you get. You can even hit off the backboard. We don't give a shit. You'll get the other 90. That's how you get your 190. Why don't you fucking earn it? It's unreal. Mel Gibson's wife. Mel Gibson's wife. You know, has she even shot a home movie? She stands to get... He's worth, at one point, was worth $800 million. She's going to get $400 million. All right? I want somebody, some female, some human being out there with a vagina to send me an email. I want you to justify, justify $400 million. Tell me why. I don't think you can do it other than say, well, that's what the law says. Ha, ha, twisting hair, right? It's fucking ridiculous. Do you know in some states, if you're riding in a car with, with like a girl who's not of age and she's in her bare feet, that's considered statutory rape? Does that make any fucking sense? It doesn't, does it? Well, I'm going to tell you right now, these fucking divorce laws make as much sense as that. They're like these old, archaic fucking laws. This is the thing. You know, there's a lot of disadvantages to being a lady. But you know one of the main advantages of being a woman is that you can be an absolute fucking bum. You can be a bum. You can have no fucking job, no drive. You cannot achieve anything in life and still come out the other side worth $400 million. Do you know what happens to a guy if he's a bum? He's a bum. He's fucking homeless. Other than Stedman. Stedman, Oprah's fucking whatever the hell he is. He's the only guy I ever saw that figured out how to be a fucking bum. Oh, there's a... Actually, let's be fair. Kevin Federline. Kevin Federline is a bum. That guy is a bum. Britney Spears even built him his own goddamn recording studio and he still couldn't make a hit. Right? Then they get divorced, and what does he do? Sits on his ass and becomes a fat fuck, you know? Getting Popeye's fried chicken off of Britney Spears' alimony payments. <coughs> He's a bum. So I guess it can be done, but come on, who's kidding who? It's very few and far between, you know? I don't know. Maybe women are coming up. Maybe they are making more money. I saw all those Christmas ads, those Lexus ads where these women were buying their guys' cars, and I got to admit... I was sitting there. I started acting like a woman when I saw that commercial. I was like, Nia, why don't you buy me a car like this fictitious couple that we see on television? That really bothered me, seeing that commercial where these women were out there buying cars. Not because my male ego couldn't handle some broad buying me a car. It's just the fact that they're putting this out. There was multiple commercials as if this shit is actually going on. As if there's so many fucking women out there buying their fucking men's a car that it's worthy of putting it out there like this is some mainstream shit that happens. Hey, fellas, how many guys, how many, how many of your male friends got a fucking goddamn Volkswagen? Forget about Lexus for Christmas. Anybody? Do you see any of your male friends walking outside screaming like a bitch in their bathrobe, jumping up and down, looking at some shiny new car with a big ribbon on it? <clears throat> Has that ever happened? I bet Oprah did it. I bet Britney did it. Who else? Sandra Bullock, she married a bum. <laughs> That's another guy. You know, those guys ought to write a book. Because they're really treading on some female shit. Like how to live like a Hooters chick as a guy. You know, how to just be an absolute fucking bum and still come out the other side a goddamn millionaire. I got to be honest with you, I couldn't fucking do it. If I was a fucking bum, all right, let me just, let's, let's, just, let's just say I was married to somebody, some lady, right? 
and she's just running some goddamn empire, coming home every day dressed like fucking Nancy Reagan, you know, goddamn brooch, just to let you know how powerful she is. And uh, she's buying me all this shit. I, after a while, I would have to leave the relationship. I, I would have to leave. And she'd be like, but Bill, you have nothing. And I'd be, that's the point. I got, I got nothing. I'm a fucking loser. I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm 14 years old and I'm still living at home with my parents. I can't, I don't have a job. I don't have any goals. I'm not doing anything. I'm just fucking sitting here going to the gym. Okay. I know what everything costs on the price is right. I, sh I shouldn't know that. Do you understand that? I, I'm sick of playing tennis with the maid. I, I have to do something with my life. This is fucking pathetic. I know I, I thought it was what I wanted. I know. I got a fucking my own sports bar. I got the beers on tap. I got the NFL, NBA, NHL, and MLB packages, and I'm still not happy. Because I'm a bum. Mrs. Reagan. All right. I'm out of here. Just give me time to find a job in a one-bedroom apartment or a fucking studio. I have to get out of here. You know, but these broads don't give a fuck. Kobe Bryant's ex-wife is a bum. And she's going to be worth close to $200 million. Do you understand that? Dude, he probably doesn't even want a game of checkers in her life. You know? Maybe she was good at shoots and ladders. You know, what does she do? I bet she has some bullshit online business. That's what those rich broads always do. So they can act like they have some fucking business but still stay at home in their fucking jam jams. I'm working on a computer. You know. Going to fucking usmagazine.com all fucking day. You're a bum. Mrs. Whatever your name is, Bryant. You're a fucking bum. You're a bum. Get a fucking job. The fuck is it going to say on your tombstone? Suck the right dick. <laughs> oh, man, I got all of that one. Uh, all right. It's now I'm actually sick of talking about it. Maybe I won't. Maybe that won't go to stage. Who the fuck knows? Go to stage. Did I just say that? We're taking this to the stage. We're having a big production. Girl quit job. Lady, this lady quit her job and traveled the world. Um, all right, here we go. My girl quit. Wait, my girl comes home. Why did I feel like there was something else in here? Did I miss one of these things? Maybe not. All right. My girl comes home early the other day and tells me she quit her job. I work full-time in a metal shop. Jesus Christ, what are you, a blacksmith? And I go to school full-time for engineering. Uh, we also have two beautiful kids. We cannot afford our houses, our house, cars, etc. without her working. And she acts like I'm a bad guy when I say, when I get on her about it. Oh, Jesus. I don't know what I should do. I'm thinking of leaving her because this is not the first time she's done this. And in the total seven years we've been together, she's worked about two and a half, ye two and a half years of around 10 jobs. Wait, she has worked about two and a half years of around 10 jobs? You mean, and I'm guessing you're saying she's had 10 jobs and collectively worked two and a half years. Can't take the financial stress anymore. What's your advice? Um, uh, the first thing I would do, I'd downsize your life. Just be like, all right, well, look, if you're not going to work, then we got we got to do something here. Um, that's incredibly selfish. And um, look, she obviously doesn't want to work. She wants to be at home. She wants to be with the kids. So you need to make enough money to basically, you know, treat her like a third kid. Um, so your lifestyle is going to have to go down then if that's what she I would just sit down and be like, can I ask you a question? Do you want to just stay home and be with the kids? You know, and let her fucking flip out and scream and yell and all that. And just don't lose your cool. Just say to her, is that what you want? Okay. Because I need to know that. Okay. So I don't keep thinking that, that we're going to be dual income and making financial 
decisions that way. I can already tell you right now, dude, that the fact that you're working full-time and she's working full-time, and the, if the second she fucking quits, you're fucked, you guys are living beyond your lifestyle, beyond your means. You shouldn't be living like that. So you're basically, the two of you guys are spending all the money that you're making. That's that's no way to live. All right? You need to be... You need you need to downsize your life is basically it. I would drive, uh, you know, use Toyota or a Honda. Those fucking things never die. I'd get one of those. I'd downsize and then, you know... I mean, I don't think you just quit on a relationship and walk out on two kids. But the stress has to be fucking brutal. And if she's being a fucking baby about it... Um, you know, that's, uh, you know, this is one of these fucking things that, you know, be a nice change on one of those chick shows, you know, a four broads sit around fucking talking about women's stuff. They never talk about this type of shit because this, this would probably be considered sexist if you brought it up. That's a hell of a fucking thing for her to be doing to you. Um, I would just, you just got to lay it on the line. Just sit her down and just say, listen, is this what you want to do? Um, I need to know that because... I'm not going through this again. All right. And I would just say you've had 10 jobs in the last seven years and you've worked collectively, collectively about two and a half of those seven years. Okay. When you quit a job like that, just quit a job and have no other job. It puts unbelievable stress on me and it's not fair to me. Okay. Okay. So I need to know, do you not want to work? Do you just want to stay home with the kids? Because if you do, we're going to have to downsize our lives dramatically. If you want to keep living like this, you need to get a job. All right? And if she flips out about that type of thing, um, I mean, that's a tough one. I, I guess I would be like, when she flipped out, be like, all right, you know something? Scream and yell and get it out of your system. But you have 48 hours to sit down with me and discuss this like an adult and cut a plan. Okay? Or I need to make a decision. Because I'm not going to live my life with this level of financial stress. Um, something along those lines. Because I'll tell you, dude, what she's doing to you is unbelievably immature and fucking selfish when you need dual income and you got two kids at home you just don't quit a fucking job all right jesus fucking christ what if you did that you know what i mean i'm telling you this right here when that fucking guy was sitting there talking that guy saying like oh you should fucking leave your job and go travel around the fucking planet this is why you don't do that what you're doing sir busting your ass trying to get ahead that's what you do when you're fucking young. Okay? It makes your life a hell of a lot fucking easier as you get older. Okay? Because the older you fucking get, you got to be somewhere. You know what I mean? Like, they, they want to hire young people, generally fucking speaking. You have to be at a certain place by a certain fucking age, generally speaking, or they're not going to give you a shot. Okay? It's like that old fucking thing about the fucking, what was it? What was it? Those two animals. One of them was storing away food. The other one was running around like a fucking jerk off. And then the storm finally hits and the ants fucking eating. And then the, the turtles uh, beat the hare. However, the fucking story goes. Um, I got to tell you this. You know, I sacrificed a lot to get where I'm at. And I missed out on a lot of shit. But the shit that I on the back end that I ended up getting to do. OK. You know. There was a whole bunch of sh stuff that I missed socially, just fun stuff, so-called regular shit that I missed because, and I slept on a futon, like I've told you a zillion times, till I was about 36, 37 years old, all right? But the outside of that was I got to perform at Madison Square Garden. I got to fucking play drums with Slash and Duff and Guns N' Roses, you know what I mean? That's fucking insane. But you got to be willing to stay on the fucking futon till you're, you're, you're pushing 40. <laughs> and 
and laying there in the loneliness of that with the fucking voices creeping in your head of doubt. And you have to beat those things down as they're telling you, did I did I make a horrible fucking mistake? Um, so what you're doing, sir, you're working full time and you're going to school full time for engineering. OK, if your fucking wife, no offense could just fucking ride it out for a couple of fucking years, all right, until you get your engineering degree, you get on your fucking feet. This is what old school couples used to do, okay? They worked more as a fucking team because generally speaking, divorce was looked down upon. And they always tried to make it look like, and there was all these women getting beaten and they just stayed in there. Like every fucking woman was getting the shit slapped out of her, all right? I'm not saying there wasn't women getting fucking, you know, the shit kicked out of them. All right. But there's a lot of fucking people to just throw in the fucking towel because it's hard. And then you're going to get with somebody else and what? It's going to be fucking easy. It it is hard. But this is this is like some shit. You need to iron this out. And she needs to get her fucking head screwed on straight and realize that she's got to fucking support you by keeping up her end of the bullshit. While you become an engineer and then you move up the fucking ladder. And at some point she's going to get what I think she wants, which is what she's going to get to stay home alone. Um, Nia, can, can you come over and just help me finish off this podcast? I know you don't want to. Your shoulders literally just slumped. I'll read this really quickly. I know you're tired. Nia, we're all tired. Are you going to sit there like I'm going to scold you like a little kid? No, I'm just tired. What is I know it's one fifteen in the morning. All right, this this guy, uh, his girl comes home. He's, it's not even your wife. No, but you got two kids. The girl comes home early the other day, and she tells me she quit her job. I work full time in a metal shop, and I'm going to engineering school. Uh, I'm going to school full time for en- engineering. We also have two beautiful kids. We cannot afford our houses and our cars, etc., without her working. And she acts like I'm a bad guy when I say when I get on her about it. I don't know why I should do. I'm thinking of leaving her because this is not the first time she's done this. In the total seven years we've been together, she's worked about two and a half of those years and had about 10 different jobs. I can't take the financial stress anymore. What's your advice, Nia Renee Hill? Yeah, I mean, I think you should definitely talk to her about it. And if you feel like she's not pulling her weight in your situation, then that's a problem. So, yeah, it's stressful. If he's carrying the burden, they have like two kids and... Whatever. I mean, is she just lying around the house all day? I mean, is she at least, you know, taking care of the kids and make sure they have lunches and all that stuff? Or is it just all falling on him? You know, that's really. Yeah, well, they need the money. All right. So so I'm all right. So I'm okay. So I both. If that's what their financial situation is, where they both need to be working, then they both need to be working. But I don't know how leaving her is going to alleviate the financial strain. But no, he's got kids. He's fucked. And then she's going to bleed him dry because she'll be pissed, I think. Yeah, I don't know. But yeah, she needs to get it together. <laughs> I'm sorry, Nia. All right. All right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Jesus Christ. All right. Sorry. Well, I should have known better. When I asked her, she showed us Louis Slump. She just literally came out of the bedroom. To grab something and she's going back to going to sleep. I'm like, oh, you want to answer a fucking podcast question? You see the instincts I have, people? All right, listen, F is for Family comes out this Friday, December 18th, for the love of God. Please sit down and binge watch it. I know all you Star Wars fans want to go see that fucking movie. When you're done seeing that movie, can you please watch my show? I really appreciate it. Uh, all right, that's the podcast for Monday. Go fuck yourselves. Don't take any shit and I'll, ta- I'll check it out yeah, on Thursday. Anyways, oh, I forgot to tell you guys this shit. I almost forgot this fucking story. So I've been trying to work out when uh, when I've been here. Two out of three days I've worked out, right? So I go to the gym the first day. It's right down the street from my apartment. There's no fucking problems. I walk in. The guy behind the counter is cool. There's nobody else there. No manager, just some cool guy. He goes, hey, by the way, it's 15 bucks. But if you go on the internet and you look this shit up, it only costs you five bucks. I said, dude, I'm old. I suck at the internet. Okay, just generally speaking, I'm not good at it. He goes, I'm just saying, you know, it's money. I was like, all right, man, I'll, I'll try to find the fucking page, and I'll, I'll come back the next day. I'll only pay five bucks. So he goes, cool. No problems. No fucking problems. I have a great workout. I fucking throw the weights around. Classic shit. 
comedian. I go to the gym in the middle of the day. It's great. There's nobody fucking there. Okay? A couple of trophy wives on treadmills, you know, fucking looking at their Instagram as they walk fucking half a mile an hour. And then you come walking in, and I don't give a fuck what time of day you walk into a gym. If you have to do chess that day, this, the, all the benches are going to be taken up. You know what I mean? Nobody's ever doing squats. You can walk into a gym Saturday. Fucking Saturday. Like, what's, what's it busy? Like, early in the morning when people come in, whatever, 9 a.m., whatever, fucking the busiest time, right after work. Six o'clock at night. Okay, you can go walk into a gym and you can just immediately just start doing squats. Nobody's ever doing, nobody does fucking legs. Everybody does the bench. So I walk in there, there's five people. They have three benches. There's like five people working out. Three of them are guys fucking bench pressing. Goddamn cunt. So I got to sit there and pretend like I'm fucking really stretching. I'm not really stretching. I'm waiting for you to finish. Right? So anyways... That was the first day. So the second day I go to go back and I'm like, all right, here we go. You know, I'm going to run into this guy again. He's going to say, how come you didn't get the fucking thing that only makes you pay five bucks? I'm be like, cause I suck at the internet. Remember I'll pay 15. I don't give a fuck. Right. And I come showing up. He's not there. There's some lady there. And then this fucking manager buzzing around. Hey, how long are you in town for? Would you like to get a membership? Well, I said, no, dude, I just want to work out today. He goes, all right, fill out this form. So it's name, address, phone number, email, all of this shit. So I write down a fake name and I say I'm from Alaska and that's it, right? So he goes, no, I'm sorry, sir. You got to fill out the rest of this, where all the address is. Now, all I had to do was just fill out a fucking fake address. But, you know, it's not how I'm wired. I got to make a point. I go, dude, I'm, I'm, I have to give you my home address? He goes, yes. I go, dude, uh, I'm not trying to be a jerk, but I'm not going to give you my home address. I'm not going to tell you where I live so I can work out one day at a gym. And he goes, well, you know, you have to fill it out. I go, why? Why do you need to know where I live? And he hems and haws, and I just keep going, why do you need to know where I live? Okay, uh, it's $15 to work out. I have the $15. I'm going to give it to you, and I'm going to work out at the gym. Why do you need to know where I live? So finally he goes, well, sir, you know, God forbid, if you have some sort of incident happens and we need to get in contact with somebody, I said, so you're telling me that God forbid, to use your expression, God forbid, I keel over on the elliptical. You're, gonna, you're not going to dial 911. You're going to go drive to my house and knock on the door and hope somebody's there. That's what you're going to do. You're not going to do that. You're going to call 911 like everybody else. And he just keeps going, well, we, you know, what, who are we going to contact? It's like, what, what the fuck do you care? Who to contact? You know, it, I just said, look, if you can tell me why I need to put down my home address, I'll, I'll write it down. But other than that, I'll, I'll give you a phone number, somebody to call if something happens to me. But don't call them. They're not a doctor. Call 911. Tell you what, yeah, that's the deal. Call 911, and here's a number, you know, if you want to let the, my wife know where the hell I'm going. That's it. You don't need to know where I live. So the guy finally goes, well, you have to fill it out. And I go, why? And he goes, it's protocol. And I go, exactly. You cannot logically defend why you want my home address. You get my home address so the people in corporate will have that information. And they can sell it to other people. Right. So I go, I'm not working out here. Right. So I go to walk away. And then the lady behind the desk, she goes, have a nice day, sir. I don't say anything. Keep walking to the elevator. She goes, have a nice day, sir. And I turn around. I go, I understand sarcasm. You're not telling me to have a nice day. You're telling me to go F myself. I got in the elevator. <laughs> I know a lot of you guys are like, Bill, why don't you just fucking you write a fake address? That's what I fuck. You know why? Because at some point there's got to be some sort of pushback. Somebody has to fucking complain about this shit. When you walk into those places and they go, do you have an ID? Don't ever hand them your ID. You hold it. And just say, here you go. I'll hold it right up to your fucking face. You want to read it? Go ahead and read it. But you're not typing in shit from my ID onto, my, onto your fucking computer. Every time you put down my name and my address, it's, it's, you've, you've added another layer where I am vulnerable to identity theft. And I'm not going to do that 
just to go work out at a fucking gym. I'm not having a kidney transplant, you cunt. I'm going to go do some fucking pull-ups. Give you all my fucking information. I don't know. You guys probably think I'm a psycho, right? I'm not. I'm right. I'm right on this one. I'm wrong about a lot of other shit. Whatever. This is stupid. Me just sitting here telling you that I'm right. Oh, really, Bill? Do you agree with yourself? That's amazing. Um, advice. Bill, just wanted to say I went to Carnegie Hall and loved your show. I'm new to the podcast, and I want your advice on a lady that used to be a huge part of my life. Okay, here we go. So, I'm a pasty white guy from the Bronx, and uh, I went out with a Dominican chick for five years, during which I learned Spanish fluently so I could speak to her parents who didn't speak English. See that? There you go. There's an American doing it because he had to. Um, and for the first three and a half years of the relationship, I fell deeply in love with her. Well, he, he writes, what a fag. You're not a fag. That's a good thing. And respected her reasons for not having sex during those first three and a half years. Oh, jeez. So skip forward a bit. I started thinking she might be the one. Then she graduated college and got an offer to teach English in Japan. First off, I don't know how someone doesn't have a full grasp of the language. Someone who doesn't have a full grasp of the language herself can teach others, but that's for them to deal with. So she said it was only going to be for a year, and she wanted to stay together. A few months passed, and she says, oh, God, no, dude, she, she's slowly breaking up with you. Anyways, a few months passed, and she says they want her to stay another year, and that she wanted to go off on some hippie trip to Africa. So I told her to go fuck herself. Good for you. My question is how to explain to everyone uh, how much of a selfish cunt this girl is. Because for some reason, everyone thinks she's a saint. Did you tell him the story? She go, He goes, I look like the asshole, especially when that typhoon slash earthquake slash Armageddon hit Japan last year, and people were asking me how she was, and I said, fuck knows, maybe dead. <laughs> I fucking love this guy. Now this bitch is coming home after three years over there and won't stop trying to contact me over Facebook. For some reason, she can't understand how selfish she was. How do I explain to this cunt how fucked up she is? Thanks for your advice, Billy Boy. Um, all right. This is what we really need to discuss here. Um, well, how do you feel about her? Do you still love her? All right? If you do, I don't know what to tell you. Because she fucked you over. She fucked you over, Okay. You don't do that to somebody. All right, I'm going to go off to Japan. It's only going to be for a fucking year, and you hang around for a year. And then after the year's up, I'm going to go to fucking Africa and go traipse around there. That really, She really didn't want to come back and see you at that point in your life. And now she's done, you know, sucking the fucking rainbow of dick she probably had since she left you. And believe me, she has, because women don't count that over-the-sea shit. I think Chris Rock had a bit about that, which is so fucking true. Um, now she's coming back to you. So this is, this, is, this is what I'll tell you, all right? Fuck people who don't understand how you feel about this girl. Fuck them, all right? You know how you feel about this girl. Now, I don't know how you feel about this girl. All I know is how you're telling me you feel about her. So that's all I can go with. You're telling me, fuck this cunt. I don't like her anymore. I want her out of my life is, is the vibe you're giving me. All right? It sounds like she's contacting you on Facebook and you're having conversations with her. She keeps contacting you, which would indicate to me that you still either have some sort of unresolved anger or you still like this girl. At which point you got to figure that shit out. But if you really don't like this girl... You don't like this girl? I'm telling you. All right? You got you to gotta cut this girl out of your life. You can't talk to her on Facebook. You can't, you can't have this girl come back in your life. That's what my gut's telling me. You can't fuck this girl, dude. What are you doing? She just kicked you in the fucking balls. 
pulled out your heart, showed it to you, giggled in your face, and then went off to Africa to fuck the Zulu nation. Okay? Which is her fucking prerogative. Now she's coming back. All right? And she's contacting you again. Dude, she's like some fucking sailor. She's got a different dick in every port, and now she's coming back going, no, no, baby, how you, no, don't be like that. You know, back of her hand, rubbing the side of your cheek. Go fuck yourself. Go fuck yourself. She just wants a ride to the airport all the way up to fucking 167th fucking street under the George Washington Bridge. Tell her to go there herself, all right, with all her fucking uh, world traveling money. My gut tells me do not get back together with this girl. Don't. All right. There's other fish in the sea and they don't go across the sea and say that they're coming back and then don't come back and then go over more seas and then go fuck some land fish. That didn't make any sense. But you know what the fuck I'm talking about. All right. Come on, man. Step outside this shit. Look what she's doing. She's coming back to town. She's coming back to town like a fucking sailor. She got to come in on a tall ship with one of those little fucking hats on. Fuck that, dude. All right? If she breaks your heart again, don't fucking write to me because you deserve it. You don't deserve it. Nobody deserves it, but come on. All right. That's what I would say. Um, he said, oh, what did he say? For some reason, she can't understand how selfish she was. That's because she's selfish. How do I explain to this cunt how fucked up she is? Dude, yeah, look at you, man. You're... You're allowing her to suck you back into her life. Fuck that. This is how you explain how much of a cunt she was. You, you stop taking her fucking calls. You stop taking her, her, her emails on Facebook, dude. She's going to fucking do it to you again like that bitch does to fucking Charlie Brown. Charles M. Schultz was trying to teach you a lesson when you read those cartoons. That's what that whole story is about. Every time he comes in to kick the football and she pulls it away, Charles M. Schultz was trying to say, a cunt is a cunt is a cunt. All right? But you just can't say that back in the day. You couldn't put that in a newspaper. Here's a good one. Should I kick my neighbor's ass? Uh, <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Generally speaking, We're gonna yes. We're going to go with yes. Uh, hey, Bill, love the is podcast. Is that what time it is? No, Damn. that's East Coast. Oh, okay. Uh, that's why people bitch. Where the fuck is a podcast? Um, I need some advice on what to do about the guy, this guy who lives in a few houses down from me. I'm a third-year college student, and I live at home. My parents moved uh, to go live in the state above mine. You mean north? And I currently <laughs> reside uh, alone while they are trying to sell the house. A few months ago, I was driving home, coming back from a gym, and while I was driving in my neighborhood, I saw this guy step in the middle of the road about 20 yards from my car. He was yelling something at me, but I couldn't hear what he was saying. I slowed down and stopped my car right in front of him, and he came to my window and told me to get out. I was totally confused and thought I'd run over, I thought I ran over his cat or something. Also, I think he just moved in because I'd never seen the dude in my life. So I rolled down the window and asked, what did you say? He goes, I'm going to kick your fucking ass. Get out of the car. This guy's probably in his 40s and has to be around 5'10". Is, that, is this me? Um, 250 pounds. That's not me. No. I'm 21, 6'3", 200. I do CrossFit and I wrestle occasionally at another gym I go to. So I get out of the car and I'm standing there trying to figure out what the hell is going on. The guy starts moving towards me. So I take the initiative and take a step towards him. We end up being an inch from each other. And he's trying to do some alpha male shit by just staring at me. But I have the height advantage, so I'm looking down at him. At least 10 seconds go by before the guy goes, how fast do you think you were going back there? I say, I don't know, probably around 30. The speed limit in my neighborhood is 20. And I know I wasn't going that much over it. Then he goes, I'm not going to have my children playing in the yard if I know assholes like you are driving like that in the neighborhood. After uh, he said that, I saw his wife and son were a little off to the side of the road. Once the word asshole left his mouth, I was fucking pissed. I wanted to just tackle the dick and put him to sleep in front of his wife and kid to teach him a lesson. <laughs> but I pussied out and just apologized to him and said that I was really sorry, sorry and it wouldn't happen again. The guy then gives me a fucking little smirk and turns around and says while walking away with his back turned, it better not or you know what will happen. Ah! Oh, yeah. 
Oh, yeah. Great. You definitely should have kicked his ass. Cunt. You should have kicked his ass. Yeah. What a fuck. Do you realize? Yeah. What a good. Do you realize what this kid did? He's such a fucking gentleman. He could have kicked the fucking shit out of this yeah. guy. He saw his wife and kid there. It would have been emasculating. Yep. His dad is Superman. He sits there. You know what it is? It's that little smirk. Yeah. That fucking smirk. I bet that cunt steals from work. Yeah. I bet he does. Sorry, dude. That's the first time. I, I literally had to walk away. You fucking cunt. Yeah. You should have kicked that guy's ass. But it's a good. You I, know, I suppose uh, it's good that you didn't do it. But because you this were is, the this bigger is, person, as they say. But he definitely has it coming. <laughs> This, then he writes, now after that, that shit, I wanted to explode. I mean, the guy totally disrespected me, so I get in my car and drive off. End of the story, wrong. I couldn't get this fucking guy out of my head. I, I, dude, I can't get it out of my head. I'm going to actually fantasize that I was there and he did that, what I would want to do. I've already, you know what I would fucking do? I would wait till he was alone. Don't do this shit. Don't do this. But I know what, you just want to get, get the guy alone and be like, hey, what are you going to do now? Huh? What are you going to do now? Just get right in his fucking grill and have him back down. Yeah. Or I, I, I would almost just say to the guy, say, hey, listen, man, just call him over to the car and just say, listen, I just wanted you to know the other day that if I wanted to, I could have fucking stuffed you in my trunk, tied you up <laughs> like a fucking pretzel and ass raped you in front of your fucking wife. <laughs> but I chose not to. Okay, because I didn't want your son to know what a little fucking... F I can't say it. Mm -hmm. Pussy. Yeah. yeah. He has for a, that wouldn't have been homophobic either. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't even be talking about gay people. That's such a fucking pussy move. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if for some reason, but but I'm but I'm no, then that's what you say. Maybe you do it like Columbo. Just say, listen, man, I gotta ask you something, because I'm six foot three. I CrossFit. I wrestle. Okay. And just looking at you, I know I could tie you into a pretzel. I know I could do it if I wanted to. But the confidence you had, I just want to know, what, what is your background? You know? Because, you know, I'm a real competitive guy. You know, if you got some sort of martial arts training, you know, if you, I would love to have you. Why don't, why don't you come down to the gym sometime when your wife and kid aren't there so I don't have to feel guilty when I <laughs> fuck you up and close both your eyes with this one and this friend over here. <laughs> what, is the, uh, what does the rest of the thing say? I don't even need not, to read it. It's not, but it's not over, though. I, I know because this, what, what's happening now, this is what happens when you do the right thing in life, okay? When, you know, you, you, it, it eats away at you. You have to make peace. You have to make peace and you, and you got to tell yourself the lie that someday this guy's going to get his. And you know what? He doesn't. Guys like this don't get theirs. Oh, that smirk. I can, this, kid, this kid really painted a fucking picture. I can, this is driving me nuts. He goes, I couldn't get this guy out of my head. A week went by, and I was still thinking about that asshole. Dude, I would think about this guy 20 years from now. Two weeks later, I was driving home from school, and I see the guy rolling his garbage can out to the curb. I slow down to fucking under 20, and I know this because I look down at my speedometer. I pretend to stare the guy down, so I look at him, and he looks at me and yells, slow down. <laughs> wow. Now, when he said that, I am fucking raging. I wanted to stop my car and do some ground and pound on his face. Yeah, this kid knows what he's doing. This isn't mm -hmm. wrestling. Like This kid's doing UFC shit. But did I? No. I just drove off like a fag. <laughs> the next day, I talked to my friend about it, about what had happened, and he said that this guy said the same shit to him. If he said it, he would have put him on his ass. I know. You, dude, you know what I would have done? He told me that uh, if he says he's going to kick your ass, then that's a threat so you can defend yourself. Don't listen to your dumb friend. He's saying you won't get arrested. So a few months have passed, and I'm still thinking about this asshole every time I drive by his house. Fast forward uh, to yesterday, and I'm I'm biking in my neighborhood, listening to an IHOP, and I hear a honk from behind me. So I pull my bike over to the side of the road, and it's none other than the same dude in his Ford F-150 driving along, and he looks at me and gives me the middle fucking finger. Wow. Now, granted, I was in the middle of the road and didn't hear the guy coming because I was listening to music, but still the middle finger. So I bike home, take a shower, and try to convince myself to walk over to the dude's house and confront him. But after a couple minutes of pacing, I just decide to wait it out until the asshole does one more thing. I mean, I don't want to get arrested. So my question is, what the hell should I do? 
I mean, every time I drive by this guy's house now, I want to fucking veer off the road and ram my car into the middle of his living room. Any advice would be good. Uh, all of my friends think I should go over there, but I want a second opinion. Um, uh, you can't do anything to this guy. Unless he puts his hands on you Unless he puts his hands on you. you this is just one anything. of these things. But you can do to him what he's doing to you. This guy has an insane temper. So, uh, you know. I'm not advocating legally, so you don't do this, but like, um, I, don't, I don't know what I would, next time, you know, if you see him out in the yard or something, this is what you do. I have a great idea. Do you have any friends who are really good mechanically? Um, why don't you take your credit card out, go down to the fucking auto store or whatever, or go online and buy like one of those fucking train horns and have it installed in your car. And next time you drive down the street, just be sort of zigzagging down the street just to get this guy to be fucking, you know, getting all like, oh, what the fuck? And the second he starts screaming, you lay on that fucking horn as loud as humanly possible and you blow out his eardrums. <laughs> That's what I would. But then again, then the, no one douche like this, he would say that I have permanent hearing damage. You know what I think you should do? Maybe because I'm a female and I'm all about. Psychological, Revenge. Okay. psychological warfare. What should you What should he do? I think when the husband is not home, I don't know if how he, if he knows his schedule or whatever. He needs to go over there when the wife is at home and be like, "Listen, you know, I'm, I'm so sorry about that time that I was speeding. I really, you know, but your your husband seems really upset. I'm really not trying to be like that. I would never do anything like that." And women are like, "Oh no, no, no," because she knows her husband is a psycho. Right. And like, I mean, she could turn around and be like, "Yeah, you shouldn't do that either." But I have a feeling she's not like that. And he can just go over and just make nice and be like the sweet kid that's helping out. And oh, do you need me to take the barrels nah, out? He do needs you? vengeance. Nia. And then, but then that, I feel like maybe that would fuck with the husband. And he's like sitting there sipping tea with the the wife. And oh, look who came over. He just wanted to apologize in person. And you know, I don't know. I don't know. You if know, what's a great thing to that. do. There's, there's, and I mean, then fuck the wife. There you go. <laughs> No, yeah. no, 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 no. He should fuck his wife. <laughs> he should fuck his. He wife. should play with his kid in the backyard, like toss the football around with him. Be more no, like, you know, be like that's the, the thing. big brother you, you he can't, never had. You can't do. There's nothing like just start <laughs> giving him, him the finger. Listen, this is the deal. All you got to do is just give him the finger. Give him the finger right back, because uh, this guy thinks you're a bitch right now. So all you got to do is, you know, you can just yell back. Just say, you know, just give him the finger. Yell back at him. When he's in the driveway, I would, like, swerve at him and then swerve back. Just fuck with the guy. He's not, I mean, just do that once because the next time you might have, like, a video camera. But um, uh, I, I just don't want to get any – I don't get any – you know what? If I was in that situation, uh, dude, you know what I would do? Yeah. Oh, um, Monday morning quarterback. Look, when I was in that situation with that other guy, right? At the last place we lived, and I didn't fuck with him because he was an old guy. I just didn't fuck with him. And yeah. now we found out he has dementia and all this shit. So yeah. I'm psyched. I never yelled at the guy. You know what you do now? You know what's, what really diffuses angry guys like that or makes them even more angry is just laugh at him. Just keep laughing at him. Laugh at him. Give him the finger. And just keep calling him tough guy. All right, there, tough guy. Anything, anything, you just keep calling them anything that is remotely, all right there, Chuck Norris, anything you want to say to this guy that will bait him into hitting you. This is a really a fuck, this is a great question, and I don't want to get in trouble if some shit goes down. <laughs> so you shouldn't do anything, sir, wink, wink, wink. Um, this guy's such a dick. I, I, I always say, you know, fucking with somebody's car is like a pussy move, but this guy's such a dick. And he has, like, such a, uh... oh, my God. Dude, how many times have you thought about throat to just choke slamming that guy right into the hood of your car repeatedly? When you as said, his wife I and can son stuff cry. you into my trunk, bend you like a pretzel, and ass rape you in front yeah. of your wife. No, but if you just said it really calmly, <laughs> if you said it calmly with sort of a smile on your face, you come off like a fucking maniac. Yeah, that's true. If you scream that at somebody, you just sound like you're quoting, like, you know, Hulk Hogan or something, right? Yeah. Let me tell you something, brother. <laughs> come this Saturday. I'm going to bend you into a pretzel and ass rape you. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right, sisters A through C. Here we go. 
Uh, tired of giving advice to guys with psycho suicidal girlfriends or people with STDs? Well, I got something a bit lighter for you here. Uh, kind of like the Coors Light version of your typical advice. Thank you. And it's perfect for the middle of the summer. I'm going to kick my feet back on this one. So I know this lady who I've been friends with uh, for a while now and banged one time. She's the oldest of three sisters, so we all call her Sister A. About two years ago, I made out with Sister B in a club, not my initiative, um, and ended up having sex with her the same night. Jesus Christ, dude. I went out with her. Dude, do they have like that thing on the back of their SUV where they have the stick figures of the entire family and you just slowly keep Xing them out? <laughs> and the family doesn't understand. Is somebody trying to kill my daughters? No, just trying to fuck all of them, sir. Well, that's a relief. All right. Um, anyways, I went out with her for a while. Oh, this is Sister B. And it was surprisingly not awkward when we were hanging out all together, even though everyone knew the situation. Jesus Christ, what southern state are you in, sir? Um, I'll go fuck yourself, people down south. That was funny. Um, some months later, Sister B left me for one of her one of my friends and got over it quickly enough. Oh, and you got over it quickly enough. And nowadays, I'm still in contact. With Sister A and B, since I'm not the kind of guy that holds a grudge for that kind of stuff. Well, there you go. That's very mature, which means you really didn't give a fuck about either one of them. So why are you going to be all upset, you know, like you own their pussy once you fuck it? I hate when I hate when guys do that. Anyways, recently, since Sister C started talking to me more frequently, after talking for a bit, she said she could pose for me since I'm a painter and she's a model. And a 10 all the fucking way, I might add. Oh, you fucking creep. You fucking creep. You fucking creep. So she was a 10 the whole time. So basically, you're in a holding pattern, banging her older sisters, waiting until this girl was of age so you could fucking paint her. Jesus Christ. I got to, you know, I might have to stand up and applaud this one. This guy's taking it to another level. Dude, this is a fucking epic situation here. So he goes, so here's my question. Does that proposition mean anything? Dude, you need my advice? I need advice from you. How, how do you fuck every girl in the same family? Jesus Christ, this is like... Do you know how long there's been a, it's been since there's been a triple crown winner in horse racing? The last time someone won the Kentucky Derby, the Preakness, and the Breeders' Cup? Is that what it is? Or is that a soccer match? I don't fucking know. I don't own a fucking horse. Since the late 70s. I would guarantee that it's been since the late 70s since somebody has who's banged three. I think a lot can do two in one family. But to get all fucking three. Dude, three. Two is uh, respectable. Three is. It, no, it's beyond respectable. Dude, three. Okay. Everybody knows it's three is in the sporting world. Dude, that, that's a fucking dynasty. Okay. You just put yourself in there with fucking Bill Russell. You put yourself in there with, with, with the fucking uh, Magic Johnson Lakers, you know? I wouldn't say the Kobe Lakers, you know, when you go out and you get Phil Jackson and fucking Shaq. That, that's that new shit that the kids like. I don't like that shit. Um, either way, dude, you're talking fucking dynasty. Oh, wait, Magic never won three in a row, but he had the Celtics to fuck with. And they won three out of four years. Give me a fucking break. Um, so here's my, Michael Jordan. There we go. So here's my question. Does that proposition mean anything? Is it a trap? Should I try to bang her? Should I try and bang her too and get a third strike or keep my dick in my pants and avoid a potential shitstorm? And if yes, do you have any tips, special tips on this special situation? All my friends are telling me to do so, but I thought I'd ask a more refined mind like yourselves before I did a move. Dude, you're looking at me like, dude, you're beyond me right now, okay? This is like Bull Durham. I'm I'm fucking Kevin Costner. I'm 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 a lifer. Okay, you're you're, you're going up to the show, hitting brand new balls every fucking day. I, I you tell me. Okay, I never banged two girls in one fucking family. You know, I was psyched if I was able to tag a couple of friends and we were all hanging out at a bar one night and you get that feeling like I fucked both of you and you both knew it and you both loved it. I hope. Please please tell me you liked it. Did you like it? Was I okay? Um. <laughs> Dude, I think you got to do it. You got to do it. 
You know, you, you've been above board the whole time. Sister A, Sister B, they all fucking knew everything, right? Now, I understand this is a little delicate, okay? He's trying to snip the last wire here. This is the kid's sister. Is, is it going to blow up in your fucking face? Uh, it's worth it, dude. It's worth it. It's worth losing a couple of limbs and your nose on this one. You got to do it. The fuck, you know? Dude, what the fuck? She says to you, uh, yeah, you're, you're a painter. Oh, let me take my clothes off and you can paint my fucking twat. That's not art, dude. That's foreplay. Give me a fucking break. It'd be one thing if you're in a classroom of people. It's just you and she's standing there naked. Dude, that's like one of the... Have they ever done that porn that scenario in a porn? Jesus Christ, you might have found a new angle. Dude, that's phenomenal. That is fucking phenomenal. Dude, you got to do it. You got to do it. Did John Elway retire when he only got one? He came back for another, right? You got to do it, dude. Dude, that's like when Bush fucking, the first Bush, he stopped and he didn't get Saddam. You got to go all the way on this one, man. <laughs> all right? You got to be like Marlon Brando in fucking apocalypse now. You just you just you just accept the fact you left the program. All right? And I don't care how mad these girls get. Dude, you are at the precipice of becoming an absolute fucking legend. Legend. Who who can, who can, who's going to be able to top that? Dude, there are celebrities who've had orgies, they've had five-on-ones and all that type of shit, okay? But I guarantee you they never fucked three fucking girls in the same family when they weren't famous, not famous. You're doing this shit with the gift of gab, whatever the fuck you're doing. Dude, you do this, you got to write a book. You got to write a book. That's you know, that's what you should do. Collection of the most amazing pussy-getting stories ever that you can somehow confirm, all right? And it has to be none of that bullshit. The second you get famous, you get money. That doesn't count. All right? That's garbage time. Okay? They put the fucking second team in there and you just fucking titting layups. That's bullshit. I'm talking about just regular dude. You, you talk yourself into it. Dude, you're a fucking legend. You got to do it. All right? There's my halftime speech. I'm going to quote Joe Bartnick quoting John Madden. Today is going to be the greatest day of your life. But only if you win. All right? You got to do it. You got to fucking do it. All right. Let's get on to stuff that I want to I want to bitch about this week. All right? Now, I know a lot of you guys, you probably think on some level that I hate women. All right? And I got to be honest with you. You're fucking right. I don't like hate them individually. But as a group, they fucking annoy me. Because they're always complaining bitch moaning and all this fucking crap unlike me who just always brings the sunshine <laughs> I this is the thing whenever it comes down to male female relationships what I've noticed on television is that if someone's going to be the douche it's always the guy if somebody's at fault it's always the guy if somebody's going to pay it's always the guy except for the occasional Britney Spears All right, who if I ever see I'm buying her a fucking beer Poor girl with that bum ass husband, right? Backup dancer sitting around the house getting fat, sitting in sweatpants that she paid for. You know, she ever went over there and slapped the shit out of him, smashed him on his head with one of her bedazzled high heels, and I was on that jury. I, I would say not guilty. I would say not guilty. I would say she's a fucking hero that she hasn't done it yet. Um, here's here's a story for you. I'm, these are the stories. I'm just gonna put this out here because I'm really hoping that this is gonna. It, 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 inspire somebody to start some sort of legislation or whatever the fuck you need to do to turn things around. Because I really in this country, there's a major problem. Women are organized and guys are not when it comes to this relationship shit. All right? Oh, you go right ahead and roll your eyes, ladies. I don't give a fuck. This isn't for you. All right? Here's a nice story. Here's, I'm going to read one of these every fucking week to fucking people realize what is going on. All right? What is not... Not what is going on. What is also going on is every fucking three minutes, I got to watch the story about some poor woman who got the living shit kicked out of her by some asshole guy. 
right? And you watch enough of those stories, and you start thinking, oh, my God, women are always the victim. It's not so. Here's a nice story for you. A little story called, Who Knew I Was Not the Father? Do I even need to read it to you? You know where this is going. This happens all the fucking time, but it, they, they don't talk about it. You know, it's not considered a major fucking problem. It's because guys are not organized, and we have to start bitch, moaning, and complaining the way women do. All right? Just mentally try and imagine what it's like to, to have a period, and that's the mindset you need to get in to, to make change in this country. That's what, I think, that's what I think is needed. All right? Okay, here we are. Boys and girls, gather around. Who knew I was not the father? Take one. It was July in 2007 when Mike, and I, Mike L. asked the Pennsylvania courts to declare that he was no longer the father of his daughter. For four years, Mike had known that the girl he had rocked to sleep and danced with across the living room floor was not, as they say, his. The revelation from a DNA test was devastating and prompted him to leave his wife. Uh, but he had not renounced their child because he's a good shit because he realized that the kid, you know, it's not the kid's fault that her mom is a whore. You know? This guy's a stand-up guy. But he had not renounced their child. He continued to feel that in all the ways that mattered, she was still his daughter. And he faithfully paid her child support. I mean, this guy is a saint. If there's a God, this guy is going straight into heaven. Okay? He could have been bitter. He could have walked away. He didn't. He stood in. Right? So it was only when he learned that his ex-wife was about to marry the man who she said actually was the girl's biological father that Mike flipped. Supporting another man's child suddenly became unbearable. Can you believe this woman? Why don't they show that? Why don't they? They're showing all these stories of guys beating women. What about a woman? Why don't they show when women do shit like this? You know, not only did she cheat on her husband. She fucked the dude raw. Not only did she fuck the dude raw, she let him bust it in him. Not only did she have a fucking kid with him, she didn't say shit to her husband. So then they, this fucking guy, he has to find out. He's sitting there, you know, looking how he looks, and his kid doesn't look anything like him. And she doesn't say shit, so one day he goes to Walgreens, gets a little DNA test, does a little swabby swab of her and then him. Sends it off to, you got to be shit me labs in fucking Colorado. Comes back, finds out it's not his kid. He's absolutely fucking devastated. His goddamn marriage is over, and he's still a stand-up guy. So now this fucking whore goes back with the guy that actually knocked her up. Now they're living together. Okay? Wouldn't you think, despite the fact that she's a whore, that maybe she wouldn't be a cunt too? You know? It's unbelievable. Why not at that point just have the fucking real dad pay? And if for some reason the courts are making this guy go through the motions of writing the check, just take the check, cash it, and give it back to the guy. Why can't you do that? You know why? Because they can never have enough. Do you know how guys can never have enough pussy? Women can never have enough stuff. You ever notice that? Even if they have a one-night stand, they still got to get a T-shirt, you know? They always got to get something. I don't know if I've said that before in this podcast, but it's fucking true. They always got to have stuff, you know, and he's, they got this free fucking money coming and This bitch has got two. She's pimping these guys. She's got two guys, two guys working for her. Goddamn genius. Also a cunt, but she's a genius of a cunt. Okay. I mean, how dumb is that guy who actually knocked her up? How dumb is he to marry her? Who the fuck marries somebody? Who was uh, who? Who marries? Who makes somebody their wife? Who was already somebody else's wife and fucked around with you? You saw what she did. You think she's not going to get tired of you? You think she's not going to go somewhere else, get some more dick and a little more, you know, foreign spackle between the fucking gams? Unbelievable. So there you go. That's and that's not misogynistic. That I'm only reading reading these stories. What I'm doing is I'm trying to balance out the bullshit that you see it on TV. The bullshit vibe that only guys cheat, guys are dogs, guys, guys, guys do all the fucking bullshit. It's okay. We are equal. 
Okay? We are equal. We are capable of doing wonderful things like this guy who did the right thing by this little girl. And we're also capable of doing horrific things. All right? Slapping the shit out of fucking women, sticking their heads in the glove box, trying to see if you can get it all the way closed. You know? We also do shit like that. And ladies, right? They can be absolute angels. And they can be uh, a steaming pile of cunt like this woman. So there you go. That's my little fair and balanced reporting. <laughs> For this week, go fuck yourselves. I've done an uh, I've done two hour two and a half hours of comedy tonight. My new special uh, I'm taping this Saturday night at the Lincoln Theater in Washington D.C. And let me tell you something, brother, I'm fucking bringing it on this one. All right, I am on a mission to outdo my last two fucking specials. Okay, and I don't care if you cunts don't think I did it. I think I'm going to do it. World War Z. Oh, there we go. Now, here's a fucking movie. Here's a guy. There's a fucking movie that I wanted to see. Brad Pitt, World War Z, end of the fucking world. Right? There's zombies. There's just shit. The world as we know it will not exist in I don't know how many days. One of the great fucking lines. The kind of line that makes me want to get off my fucking couch. You know? Put on my slippers. Put on a smoking jacket and go down to the local movie theater and, and take in a picture, right? And then in the end of it, after they show everybody running for their fucking lives, it's the end of the goddamn world. World War Z. What? 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 Is, I don't even know what that is. It was World War One, World War Two. They said fuck all the numbers right through infinity. Fuck the entire alphabet all the way to the last letter. World War Z. I'm. I'm fucking. I'm there. I got to see this shit. And then in the end, what do they do to me? Rated PG-13. Oh, go fuck yourself. All right? And that's not a go fuck yourself to Brad Pitt or the director or anybody else that I'm trying not to burn a bridge with. <laughs> it's a fuck you to the cunts. I know that that was a rated R movie. In fact, I've heard that it was, and they fucking took the knees out of it, and they fucking drag it down into PG-13. All right? I don't give a fuck who you are. If the world is ending and you're getting chased by zombies, you're not running around going, oh, golly gee, oh, heck, criminies, oh, Jiminy Cricket. And once every 10 minutes you go, oh, shit. You know? You don't. It's the end of the world with zombies. From the beginning, once they discover the zombies to the end of that movie where they hopefully solve the problem, should be a bunch of people. Wait, 85% of the people going, fuck, what the fuck are we going to do? Oh, my God, the fucking zombies. And then the other 15% should be grabbing them by the shoulders going, for Christ's sake, get a fucking hold of yourself. Right? That should be most of the dialogue in that movie. But now... Now, I don't know why I just said it that way. Now it's it's PG-13. So what are they going to do? What, what, what's going to happen? Are they going to slowly, you know, have some metaphor for why we should not stop using fucking plastic water bottles? Are they going to weave that into the storyline? You know, you know, it's funny. I actually tweeted. I have to admit that I hang my head in shame, but I did tweet. And I do still consider myself a man. Even saying that out loud. Say it again, Bill. I tweeted. Um, I said zombie movies are rated R. Hashtag World War Z. All right? And most people agreed. So, of course, this one cunt goes, I have to respectfully disagree, said the success of uh, The Walking Dead. That's what he said. Said the success of The Walking Dead. Fucking Twitter hack. It's just like, oh, that, that, that's a great idea. I see that business model. So let me get this straight. I'm going to spend over fucking $100, $150 million of my money making a zombie movie, and I'm going to make it no more fucking crazier than what people can sit at home on their couch and watch. That's what the fuck you're telling me? That's that right there. That's your business model. That makes sense to you. Forget about all the cunts who are going to steal the movie anyways. Or just, man, I'll just wait a few weeks, and then I'll watch it on fucking whatever, right? You want to get them out? You want to get them excited, see? They come down to go see the picture. In a big screen. Get themselves some popcorn. Sitting there with their best gal. Right? You're going to make it, you know, what? Why don't you just make according to Jim's 
World War Z. You know? No disrespect to Jim or according, right? I'm just saying, what what the fuck? What is the purpose? It's like when you go out to your favorite pizza place. If you could make the pizza just as good at home, you, you wouldn't fucking go out there. Or if someone would just show up to your fucking house and step out of your TV and go, here's your fucking pizza, you're not going. Why the fuck would you make a PG-13 zombie fucking movie? Could somebody, for the love of fucking God, explain that to me? They've been doing that lately. All right? Superhero movies should also be rated R. Unless you're doing one of those douchey ones that nobody cares about. All right? But all the other ones, Batman, Captain America, all that shit should all be rated R. Those superheroes are not for kids. Those are for adults who don't know how to fight and want to live through somebody else who actually has a six-pack. That's what those movies are for, I feel, you know? And I actually think that I, I would take – I would actually go – if I haven't made a fucking superhero movie, I would go for the NC-17. You know, you remember in Spider-Man when he's hanging upside down and the fucking girl's kissing him? Right? That wouldn't be... He would have been hanging a little bit lower, if you know what I mean. He'd still be upside down, but he would be hanging a little bit lower. Come on, people. Do the math. Somewhere between 68 and 70 is what I'm talking about. All right? That's how that fucking scene would have gone down. Okay? And fuck all these critics who would be like, oh, my God, that's absolutely horrific. Stan Lynch must be fucking rolling over on his futon because they never gave him the money he deserved for creating the character. And I, I would be, I stand by it. I stand by it. This is the Peter Parker that everyone knew existed, but no one wanted to see. You know, he'd be hanging upside down, just thrusting his fucking spider dick right in her mouth. Okay? You know why? Because he's, because <laughs> he's Spider-Man. All right? Half man, half spider. Using the power for good. And he still has a day job. Still has a fucking day job. Isn't that great? I mean, talk, what, a, what a common man. He's not like Bruce Wayne walking around at all these fucking eyes wide shut parties. You know, how many tuxedos does Bruce Wayne own? And how did he make his money? You know? I know all these comic book people are losing their fucking minds because I don't know anything about the backstory about any of these fucking people. And I don't give a shit. All right. How much? What, what did he do? How huh? did he inherit money when both his parents got shot in the alley? There, there, your parents got killed. Is that what the money he's spending? He's never working. He's never at work. In any of those fucking movies. It's always going over to the mayor's house. He's a fucking trust fund kid. Peter Parker still works for the school paper or whatever. I'm working for fucking Jameson, a guy named after whiskey. All right, that's your guy. And I liked when he wore the black suit, too. I think that that one looked better. You know? And the suit started controlling him. I didn't like that. That made Peter look weak. All right. You know, you know I'm in over my fucking head when I'm, I'm talking about goddamn superheroes here. Um, 